Hey YouTube, I'm back with another uh, update on the Duke 890R project. Uh, so about a month ago, my wife and I went to uh, Portland, Oregon on a bit of a family trip. And uh, while I was there, I was always able to manage uh, some sort of bike shop visit uh, to go and um, you know check out what what's neat and, and interesting to find in, in whatever new city that we ended up in. So. And going to uh, Portland, uh, EDR Performance is on the outskirts of uh, that major city in a place called Beaverton, Oregon. So I made a trip there, did the little fanboy thing, um, was <laughs> was talking to the owner, Eric, there. They sponsor Andy Debrino in Moto America, and he you know, talked to me about a bunch of stuff, gave me some ideas. Anyway, long and the short of it is uh, it, uh, that, that trip actually coincided with my birthday. And um, it ended up with me walking out of EDR Performance with, wait for it, a rapid bike tuning module. And here it is there. Not installed because the map I got them to put on there was for a cat delete. Yes, once again, I've tried three different slip on exhausts looped back to the original with that snazzy carbon fiber cover. But now I'm going to do something with the sound and noise of this bike by eliminating this big, heavy catalytic converter. And uh, a bunch of uh, YouTube videos have been put on. Maybe you've seen them where uh, it is possible to run a 890 with a cat delete and not a tuning module. But they do talk about, you know, it, it is a bit on the... Um, lean side right between 4000 and 5000 rpm which is right where this bike is turning at between 60 and 70 miles an hour on the highway so with that in mind and and again wanting to to you know do this right if i'm going to get a cat delete i'm going to get uh, the proper tuning module i was supposed to have the cat delete by now and i ended up getting um a cat delete with a resonator chamber in it you can get straight pipes uh, from China for 60 bucks, but they're obscenely and annoyingly loud. Whereas I wanted to get one with a resonator to help keep the noise down. And there's two options out there on the market right now. There's an Aero one, which is the more common one, to be honest. They run about 320 US, but IXIL USA has one that's uh, quite a bit cheaper. Um, maybe not the same resonator size, but it has a resonator in it for, I think uh, it ended up being with shipping to me, uh, 212 US, including shipping. So over hundred dollars less. However, there was a bit of a screw up in terms of shipping. Uh, the company's made it right. It's on its way, but I, I don't have it on yet. And besides the, the cat delete, the, the mechanical part of that is fairly straightforward, but when you start putting on fueling modules, you have to be very careful with what you do and how you do it and how you route the wires and that sort of thing. It's not something you want to slap on quickly. So anyway, hopefully that gets on um, uh, relatively quick. So uh, as you can see, uh, I think my last video was after the last track day. The black wheels are back on with the uh, street tires because uh, I did do the second and what looks to be unfortunately the last track day of the year. Um, and maybe I'll loop in some track day footage into this video with the 890R. And um, yeah, here are the tires over here. And um, yeah, again, the, the bike performed absolutely flawlessly. Uh, these are the Q4 tires. Uh, my tr local track is a, is a short track but pr predominantly a left turn track. And you can see that, that this side of the tire is pretty much baked. You could probably do another, you know, half day track day or full day track day at, at less than 100%, but the sipes are basically gone here. So this is, this is pretty much toast. The front Q4 is still fine. Like a lot of things, the, you know, get lots of life out of the front. Uh, if if you want it and so what I'll likely do is is you know keep the Q4 lever off the this Q4 maybe put a Q5 on it and and see if I can get some another another session out of this so bike ran flawlessly um, 
the traction control. You might see in some of the footage, depending on what angles I put on there, I, I had the camera in three different orientations, but coming out of the uh, last turn on the track, which has is pretty bumpy at the exit, you can actually see the traction control light um, come on. And um, yeah, it, it did its job. Tire last well, no no slips. I did push the front uh, one time, which was a bit of a scary moment, but that had more to do with the crazy wind gusts and running a bike without a fairing than anything else. So tires went ran well. And I think my enjoyment of the track day, honestly, and this is like a, a sales pitch to steering dampers everywhere, but I did get rid of the uh, original steering damper and I put on a uh, Hyper Pro steering damper. This is the, the they make two. Uh, one, is, one is an RSC, uh, this is a CSC, which is like sort of a constant rate steering damper. Uh, the RSR has some snazzy valving <clears throat> where, um, you know, when you, when you move it slowly, or you turn the bar slowly, um, it goes through one sort of uh, fluid chamber, but when you do it quickly, like in the event of a tank slap or harder damping comes in. Anyway, this was an absolute godsend. Um, the, the, the tank slappers I was getting out of turn five, uh, the first time I went out this year, are were gone. <laughs> difference so as as painful as it is to, to spend hundreds plural of dollars on a hydraulic damper um, as you know it makes all the difference in the world so worth worth every penny so I'm glad I put that on uh, got it from Brooks suspension out of the UK so even with the shipping uh, Canadian to Great Britain pound exchange all that sort of stuff it got here super quick and it ended up being cheaper than buying the same thing out of the States. So, you know, some savvy internet searches can sometimes find you a better deal for the same thing and save yourself a few bucks. Uh, this, as you know, is for a uh, transponder. So I did run a transponder this past weekend. The, the full lap times aren't up yet. The, the uh, track volunteers and guys in the club were, they were doing, wearing multiple hats and, and running themselves ragged, but the the quickest lap time i saw was a uh 106 one which i haven't gone that fast since uh 2017 i think and that was on a dedicated uh race bike with slicks uh, actually a ktm 690 uh, and, and then with again different track conditions and that sort of thing so happy with that I'm, i may have gone faster in another session i just haven't seen the lap times posted uh, i don't think so uh, it kind of happened the last session in the morning before the wind started to pick up and get kind of crazy and the tires started to go away. So anyway, I'm happy with that. And my goal again was a 105 and I missed it by like a, a hundredth of a second or something like that. So that, that was a bit of a, uh, a frustrating thing, but it'll come. And again, this is a street bike, not a race bike. I just, you know, want to say that I went a certain speed on a, on a bike if possible. Um, so. One of the things when I was at EDR Performance is uh, the owner, Eric, uh, and I were talking and, and he was asking me about my bike and, you know, what specifications I had. And he mentioned, and I asked him about, uh, they said that they had a, an ABS delete kit and we didn't talk to it about, but he, he kind of looked at me and said, you, you got a track bike and you still run ABS? And I said, yeah, I haven't really noticed it yet. And sort of cryptically, he said, oh, you will. So uh, this last weekend when I was really uh, pushing the bike and trying to you know go th faster through sections and leave my braking later and later, 
sure enough, um, I went into a, a, a turn where you go from about 160 kilometers an hour down to 60, or at least that's what it says on my uh, dashboard. I want. To numbers higher of course eventually but that uh, that's that's a hard a lot of braking in a short amount of time and for the first time uh, for me anyway the ABS kicked in and it's not like I crashed or went off the track but I ended up kind of blowing the corner because you know where I thought my braking distance would be just got extended how much did it get extended by I don't know two three four feet I'm not a pro racer so any deviation from what I'm used to or what I'm expecting is pretty disconcerting. So um, I plan on um, doing an ABS delete and EDR sells a kit and I did buy something from them when I was in their brick and mortar store. But uh, they, Eric and I have been emailing back and forth and they say due to problems they don't ship to Canada. So I think I think based on what he said to me on the, on the email, it's a fairly straightforward um, process. So what you do is you run lines straight from the master cylinder down to the caliper. So I'll run a single line to a T-splitter to each side. And then likewise for the back, a, uh, a single line from here down to the master cylinder. But all of the ABS hoses um, need to be removed. And you can't remove the ABS unit on this thing or else it throws up some problems. So I did this on the 690 Duke years ago but it, this is a bit more complicated and that somewhere buried underneath here is the ABS brake pump unit and I'll need to plug the inlet and outlet lines for the rear ABS and the inlet and outlet lines for the front ABS with a fine pitch M10 bolt and some crush washers. So I, if I remember correctly it's, it's M10 by um, 1.0. So that's great. I've gotten rid of the ABS, but then the uh, cheeky, cheeky Austrians, the um, the pressure switches to run the front and brake lines originate from under here, not here or at the master cylinder. So then, if I if I'm lucky, what I think I can do is take the two pressure switchers switches. For the, that are located at the ABS pump, move one to here, run it off of this and extend the wiring up into the harness. And then one from here, run it off of here and extend it back and into the harness. And my front, uh, the, the, the brake light will work if I, if I operate the front and rear brake line. Because I guess what I'm, I'm noticing, I think maybe as the fluid goes off or maybe there's some air in the system, but like this is no longer, like this is, it's firm at the lever but then it it it's mushy and I don't like it like that I like it firmer and yeah I have adjusted this uh, actually it was at 19 I adjusted it up to 20 21 there's not enough lever movement that I like so anyway that's going to be one of my uh, winter plans uh, to do that um, you know Eric's reassurance is by deleting you know, or rerouting the ABS lines, it doesn't throw a fault code. But um, the last thing I want is a is a you know check engine light come on or something like that because it's, it reads something from wheel speed sensors. And and yeah, there is there's some wheel speed sensors down here, um, but I think that might be for traction control more than uh, anything else, or or maybe it's ABS. I don't know. Eric says it doesn't throw a, a fault code. He's been racing and, and riding these things for a while, so um, that's my plan. So what I'll do is I'll likely uh, get the parts from my friends at uh, Venn Hill. This is my paper to take some measurements. So they'll sell you all the lines and parts and whatever color you want and custom lengths and uh, with, with the fitting. So this is for the Ducati project that's still at Ironcraft getting the fuel tank um, modified. So that's, that's what I'll do is, is do the same thing there and get... Um, three lines in order to uh, <clears throat> in order to to take care of that so uh, oh yeah and the last thing is actually on this side um, so I did some experimenting with with gearing and um, 
uh, you can see that the chain is not the stock chain. The stock chain, uh, I'd, I'd heard on forums and stuff like that, it's it's a very uh, um, you know cut price option that, that KTM put on there to save some money. And uh, it, you know it's not a great chain, you know. And and guys were were saying uh, it squeaked. Uh, well, that's put some WD-40 on the thing; it won't squeak. But sure enough, after about 8,000 kilometers on on my chain, um, you know, when it's quiet out and you're riding, and I was going slowly, uh, there was there was a squeaking noise. And sure enough, despite you know the the care and concern I, I spent on the original chain. Um, it was squeaking and making noises and that sort of thing. So it, it's a heavy chain. It's it's a known weak spot of the bike. So the good news is is that with KTM's, every once in a while, again, if you are a savvy online shopper, um, you know bike parts distributors oftentimes have have you know things for sale. And how many different manufacturers would someone be considering putting an orange chain on a bike? Uh, one, KTM. So. I did have to cut this chain down to size. It was 120 links. I had to cut a few off it, but I've, I've cut chains uh, many times. Uh, I got it for a great deal. You know, uh, it's a proper X-ring chain, 520, 9,000 foot tensile strength. So like the strongest lightweight. And um, yeah, put that on. And of course it came with a nice, where is it here? rivet master link and i've got the proper tools to put that on and i uh, actually after the track day weekend decided to go back to the original 41 tooth steel sprocket i had a f aluminum 41 i even had an aluminum 43 i wanted to try because i thought you know i'd maybe get some better acceleration which i did but then again uh, going through the track day footage i was about six to ten kilometers an hour slower uh, at the end of the front straight braking for turn one than I was when I had the 41 tooth chain on there. So it's that fine balance between, you know, going up in sprocket size for better acceleration, going down in sprocket size for top speed, you know, a, a naked bike with no fairing at, uh, at Gimli Motorsports Park and this configuration, you get a higher top speed with a 41 and, and you know, use the torque of the engine to get you out of corners to make up for the, for the you know, trade-off, I guess, in acceleration for lack of a better term. So new chain on there anyway, and it's still, you know, still got the original grease on it. It doesn't have many miles on it at all. And it going on the, the steel front, the steel rear sprockets, I, you know, it'll, I don't know what will wear out first, the chain or the sprocket, but it won't wear out anytime soon rather than having an aluminum one. So, and again, as always, those of you in the know, um, look about, look online about shedding, setting the chain tension. It is, it's disconcertingly loose, um, is the, is the correct way to set it. Never skipped a tooth, never threw a chain and the quick shifter up and down works, uh, perfect in my opinion. So, so yeah, that's where we're at. Probably in the next little while, what I hope to do is, uh, show you uh, the decat and the uh, maybe even a, a, a bit of a video on on putting on the uh, rapid bike module it's it's not too tough but you know you do need to take the tank off and and route some wires in some ingenious sort of way and yeah i'll um i'll take some measurements today and and order up some uh some stainless brake lines to do the abs delete on this thing and i think you know, you can go with basic black, you can go with bright orange. I might go with uh, maybe electric blue to match the tank. I don't know, I'll have to think on that. Aesthetics is important. Anyway, slowly but surely, I'm gaining one or two subscribers uh, every couple of weeks. So tell your friends about this, like and subscribe. Hope to have some uh, updates for you and uh, yeah. Winter's coming, uh, which means pretty quiet times for riding, but it's always a good opportunity to, to do some tweaks with motorcycles. So.